Hey everyone, Karchi Vester back with the first video of 2021. In this video, we're going to look at my best and worst calls of 2020 and what we can actually learn from that moving forward into 2021. Obviously, 2020 was a crazy year for all of us, whether it was Corona, politics, stock market crash, you name it, 2020 was an awful year for a lot of people. But for investors, could have been a very, very, very good year. So we're going to look at those good and bad calls I made in 2020. And let's try and prove that in 2021. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, you can hit that right below. If you like these videos, leave an early thumbs up as it really helps me out grow the channel, get my videos out there. I'm also donating $10. We're planting 10 trees for every 1000 likes a video gets. So you're actually helping the world and the environment at the same time. So without further ado, let's look at my best and worst calls of 2020. All right, so let's start with the worst calls of 2020. So my first one is Zoom. Actually, I did not buy Zoom, I think when it was around $100, $110 because, well, I actually made a video about that. I put it on private because I was ashamed of it, but it's now back public. Don't worry, the sound is very, very bad. Quality is very, very bad. I was making videos like a noob, but basically the content was, I did not believe Zoom was such a great company. I thought it was overvalued. I had concerns about privacy issues because, well, those were actually real concerns out there. I did not think we would be staying at home for that long. I thought not a lot of people were using Zoom. Obviously, I was very, very wrong on that front. We can see actually right here that, well, around mid-March towards April, I think beginning of April, I made the video, but I actually looked at it at the end of March or so. So when I made the video, I think it was at around about $113, $110 or so. I said, if it goes below 100, I might be picking it up because obviously I followed this stock a bit before. I actually followed this stock when it IPO'd. I did not buy, I know I'm crazy, but if you look at it, I missed out on, let's say, 174% in gains. I know it's a lot and it really hurts because I'm actually looking to buy Zoom right now because of this huge dip. Because right now with the numbers and with more looking into that company, I believe Zoom is here to stay even after Rona and everything. All right, and number two is Snapchat. I think beginning of April, I did a video about five stocks I wish I had bought during the crash because well, I thought the crash happened, these stocks have already maybe gone up 30, 40, 50% or so. So I'm not looking to buy those stocks anymore because I thought, well, the situation is getting worse. Stocks are going up, so it doesn't make sense. But let's look at the price of Snapchat back in April and let's look at that today. So beginning of April, the price of Snapchat was around $11 or so. Now we're at 50, so I missed out on 352% in gains. And you know what's the worst? The worst thing is that I actually like Snapchat's business. I actually talked with friends about Snapchat saying maybe it might be a good time to buy that company because, well, I believe it was undervalued, but ultimately I forgot about Snapchat. I never bought into it. And the worst thing is it actually was very stable for a long time. It went sideways, but yes, on the way up, but I could have bought at 19, 20, 25, whatnot. I would have still doubled, even maybe tripled my money until today so yes that's my number two and still hurts still hurts very much then we have number three the reason why it's not number one is because i don't like this company plain and simple i know a lot of you love this company i know a lot of you have been holding this stock but i just don't like the business i think it's very risky i think it's very risky because a government like china for example is heavily backing this company so like Luckin Coffee, in which I invested as well. That's another one. But this one is NEO. I have been hearing about NEO for a year now. Yes, for a year, when the stock price was just $1, $2 or so. I did not buy into that company. Only a fool would buy into that company or somebody that likes to gamble because it was on the brink of bankruptcy. When it was $1, $2, everybody thought, and it was actually going to happen, they will be closing doors would go bankrupt until yes they were saved by obviously the government some other companies that have been buying into neo like tencent for example 
then the stock is going up and up and up. So yes, NEO is my number three, but could actually be my number one because it went up by 50, 40 times or something like that. But the first time I actually did a video about them was I think in June or July or something like that. And the price was, I think between six, seven, eight dollars or so. Then obviously it went up a lot, couple of weeks, 111%. And then obviously, if you look at the, let's say, end of June until today, it went up 606%. Like I said in my videos, I actually bought NEO around here, I think at $11 or so. I sold at $17 to $18. Quick trade, very nice. I bought again on actually this exact day, 14th of December. And I sold yesterday at $50. So I've made, I think, 20, 25% or so on that trade. Then another close to 60% on the other trade. So I like trading NEO. I just don't like holding it because I don't believe in the business. And like we've said, we don't hold companies we don't believe in because if it goes down, you don't know why because you don't believe it. You don't understand it. Now, my last worst call is obviously Locking Coffee. I bought Locking Coffee. I made a video about Locking Coffee. Obviously, a lot of you know what happened with Locking Coffee scandal, fraud, delisting, stock went down, I think 90% or so. I actually am still holding my whole position in Locking Coffee. <laughs> it actually went up since its lowest point. We're now close to $10 again. Don't plan to sell it because it's not worth a lot of money. So I will keep it in my portfolio just in case one day it might go up again because, well, I don't know, they've cleaned their books or whatnot. Now enough with the bad stock picks. Now let's go and move into the very, very good ones. All right. There are actually lots of good ones, but very, very short-term trades such as the cruises, the casinos. I bought all of those in March, April, sold them. I think when the, the first top was made, I think with around 20, $24 or so. So I doubled, almost tripled my money on that. We're not going to look at that because those are stupid stocks. Everybody could buy and gamble and wish for the best, but we're going to look at stocks like Pinterest, Square, Tesla, and a couple of others like Okta and Twilio. All right, so first up we have Pinterest. I think my first video about Pinterest was beginning of June. It was around $20, $19 or so. So if you bought back then, let's say, we let's take this price right here. If you bought back then, you are now up 224%, pretty nice. Obviously, if you buy and hold and then add to your position, maybe you might not see this exact number, but just so you know, that's how much it got up since my first video on Pinterest. And next one is actually a genomic stock called Invite. I think I was one of the first ones that I know of that actually talked about this stock below $20. So my first video about that was, I think, at $16 or so in May. Since then, the stock has gone up 160% till this day. Obviously, to its highest point, it was closer to $200. 51. I actually sold in Vite at $37, but I'm planning on picking it up again at $40 or so, because unfortunately I cannot buy the ArcG ETF. If you can, that's a way better play to do. I'm actually going to cover ArcG in a video coming up, I think next week or so. So stay tuned for that. All right. And number three, creme de la creme is Square. Obviously I've been holding Square since I think 2019 or so, but looking at 2020, let's take an average of $50 because I've covered it obviously a couple of days before the huge crash. And then I've been covering it every month. So let's take an average price of $50 looking around March, let's say end of March until today, you would have been up 308%. Pretty good if you ask me. Obviously, you know, I'm very, very bullish on Square. I think this is a very, very long-term hold and the price will only go up, right? And the other good picks are Twilio and Okta. I actually bought those before the crash, but since those are stay-at-home stocks that went up a lot, I actually doubled, almost tripled my money on both of them. Spotify, another stock I love and I'm still holding. I bought it just after the Joe Rogan deal. People thought I was crazy. It's just a Joe Rogan deal. Why would it go up even more? Well, I, I think I doubled my position since then. So there's that. I'm still holding. I still think Spotify can go up even further. I've made videos about Spotify covering the whole thing. Why I am so bullish on this company. Obviously, all videos will be in the top right corner. Please don't laugh at the quality of those videos. I was just a starter on YouTube. So please just like it and that will be fine. Now, lastly, I just want to talk about my position in Tesla. I bought Tesla one year and a half ago, August 2019. You want to look at the graph, see how crazy it looks. So here it is. I bought it mid-August 
Obviously, pre-split, I think the price was around about $186 or so. If you take that point here, 16th of August, up until today, I'm up 1,500% on my position. What? Obviously, I was adding Tesla shares each and every month. Each time there was a huge dip, I was buying Tesla. So obviously, you will not see 1,500% gains on my position because I kept adding and adding. So overall, I'm pretty happy about my 2020 calls. Hopefully my 2021 calls will be even better. I hope this channel will help a lot of you be better investors out there. I will try to keep it as short as possible to inform you as best as I can. So if you like these videos, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And as always guys, take care, stay safe and see you all in the next video. Bye bye.